Hey everyone, Matt Lake here with an Unreal 5 animation graph tutorial. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be explaining how the blend pose nodes work. Uh, so let's start off by going into the animation graph. We can right click and type blend poses. Uh, so you can see here, we've got three different types of blend pose nodes. Uh, they all kind of work the same on a fundamental level. They work by switching the execution path of an animation pose down a different route. But the main difference is how many poses it's blending. Um, so let's get them all in and kind of show some of the differences. So the first one is a blend pose by Boo. This is a switcher between two states, no less, no more. Um, let's just hook this up so we can demonstrate what it does. So we've got third person run here. And let's, uh, let's pick a different animation like the idle. So um, in this, if I compile, you can see in a false state, it's going to play the idle, and you can see the variable going in is, is set to false, so it's going to go onto that one. But if I set it to true and recompile, you can see it's going to switch to um, the sprint state. Um, but what we can do is we, we can promote this to a variable. So then we can uh, change this in the animation previewer, and you can see it blend. So it's really good for switching between two states. Um, However, if you want three states, there is two more nodes that you can use. So there's the blend pose by int, which does the same, but instead of uh, switching between the false and true state of a bool variable, it switches between an integer value. Uh, and to add new uh, values in here, you can right click, not on the blend pose like I just did, right click on the actual node itself and click add blend pin. And then you can keep adding them. So we've got three, four, um, you can do as many as you want. Um, and you can then blend that through multiple different animations. So if we just hook these up to demonstrate, let's pick some different animations. So we'll put a jump on that one. We'll put, uh, we'll put a walk on the other one. So we'll plug that into there. So kind of like the original one, if it's set to zero, it's going to do the run. If I then set that value to one, it's going to do the idle, do that value to two, it's going to do the jump, and then finally three, um, it's going to do the walk. Again, we can promote this to a variable, and then we can actually change this in the, the animation previewer to one, zero, two, three, zero, and you can see it ac actively moving between them. Um, however, in some cases, using an integer value isn't very um, clear. You, you can't understand what it is. You might need a, a comment box to the side going um, zero equals run, uh, one equals idle, two equals jump. It's not very not very practical for outsiders or people at first glance to, to look at and kind of quantify what it's doing uh, without reading, especially if this does more than just plays an animation. If there's a state machine or something here, it can get really complicated. So there's a third option, uh, which you can do called a blend pose by enum. So for the sake of this tutorial, I've already made a, a, an enum called enum tutorial, um, but I'll quickly show you how to make your own. If you go to the content browser, and all you have to do is right click, go to blueprints, enumeration down here, and it'll create your own enum. And you just have to open that window and Add some, add some entries in, and that will uh, that will um, make one that is accessible in here. So we go blend pose, and then if we scroll down, is it new user blend pose by new user? There we go. So there's the new enum that we've just used. So. Again, like the uh, like the blend pose by int, you can right click on the blend poses enum node and you can see add pin for element. And the one benefit that uh, enums have over integers is you can actually name the values. So if I go back to my enum tutorial, you can see I've called it A, B, and C. So make it even more readable and call this walk. We can call this run and call this one jump. And if we go back to here, you can see that we've now got walk pose, run pose, jump pose. So if I do the same thing here, so we got walk into there, got run into there, jump into there. It's 
Now, the default value is, uh, it's, it's gonna default to the first one, which is zero. But if we promote this to a variable like the other ones and go to the anim previewer, we can now see that this value will switch around based on something a little bit more legible. Um, in the animation previewer, it is coming up like a, um, Uh, the wrong enum type. So if we put in the tutorial uh, enum for the actual data type, we should be able to see that in the previewer, we can actually see it swap between a run, jump, and a walk very clearly. So you can see the day and night comparison there, of like a zero, one, two, and three to a, uh, a walk, run and jump. A lot more readable. Um, if code calls it or other blueprints call it, you can call these states and it's a lot more legible. Um, and it's uh, it, it's just the, the better route to use really if you are, um, if you're going with multiple uh, animations. All of these nodes uh, do provide uh, several settings available. Um, so on the node itself, you can see that each one has its own blend time. So each unique pose has its own so this is uh, the equivalent of a transition event going into it. Uh, it's the time that it's going to take the blend in. So if we change this one to one and compile that, the next, if I swap to run and the next time somebody goes to uh, walk, it's going to take one, one second to blend. So it's going to blend a lot slower. So if I put it to zero on the run and compile that and swap to run, it'll be one frame, it'll pop. So you got really slow to the walk, but you got pop to run. Very powerful, um, like I say, equivalent to a state machine transition event. Additionally, on the actual um, details panel of the node, there's a bunch of settings available here that will uh, empower you to do certain things. So the first main one is the transition type, uh, which will change the blend uh, method. So it defaults to standard blend, although available is inertialization, uh, which came in in about 425, I believe. Uh, but to get it to work and blend properly, you'll notice even on ones with blend, it just pops. So if I put them all to one second, no matter what, it's going to pop because the inertialization has not been set up. So if I bring this output pose down here, we need to put an inertialization pose in somewhere between the output pose and after the blend pose. So if we drop that in, swap them around, and now you'll see it begins to blend properly. And if you're not familiar with what inertialization is, I'll do a separate video explaining all about it and how useful it is. It's not a one shoe fits all case. It's an alternative to blending that's more efficient, but um, it should be used very sparingly and in the correct situations. So if we go back to some of the settings, uh, we got some blend type settings, which you can change it from linear, cubic, kind of standard blend settings or even blend profiles. But one of the other main options is the reset child on activation. So with this set, if you turn it on, basically every time a pause comes active, everything along that pause will reset to as if it was on begin play. Um, th this is more apparent in, when you're using things like a state machine on the side of one of these pauses rather than just playing an animation. But um, if, if you've got a state machine and it's in a certain state, if it's reset, it'll go back to begin play value but if you don't have it reset, it'll keep that state and kind of resume from where it is when it uh, becomes active again. But uh, th that's about it covering the blend poses. But one final tip in terms of optimization is that uh, blend pose nodes are marginally cheaper than using a state machine. Uh, so if you only require a state machine that requires two states, make sure you're using the likes of a blend pose uh, by bull node. If you've only got a handful, try using one of these instead of a state machine as it's a lot cheaper. Um, but yeah, I hope that helped. If you've got any questions, be sure to comment. Um, if you've got any requests as well, uh, give me a message. And I hope that helped. Thank you very much.